What's up, everyone? It is your girl, your diva in knowledge, Lady Mocha. Represent Mocha's Cafe de Paris. Hope everybody's week is going so far so good. Um, if you did not catch last night's chat, um, I did a live chat with um Guy King, Real Aaron, Collins, um, Classic Ruby, Kells, Cool Gent. We had a wonderful panel. Oh, and also Mr. Research. We had a wonderful panel last night. It was really, really long. I think it was five hours. Um, if you didn't get a chance to view it or check it out, you know, get a chance. Make sure you do that, even if you don't catch the whole live stream, because I know it was relatively long. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty well. It went pretty well. We talked about various com various topics, but the main topic was um, talking about better male breeders. And um, Beastie Baby Mamas, and eventually uh, I'm still going to do a revamp on that because um, I still would like to elaborate a little bit more on that subject. So uh, when the time comes, you know, just hit the notification bell. So that way, when I do a revamp on it, um, you will be the first to know and be notified so you can check it out. So with no further ado, moving right along, I thought it was imperative that I served you with this particular recipe. On today's menu, um, we're talking about relationships real relationships all full-time job the reason why i felt it was imperative to go into this content is because there's um a lot of people that are not understanding that relationships are a job it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of effort and it's not going to be easy just like some jobs are easier than others and some jobs are harder than others that's basically the way relationships are orchestrated some relationships are going to be way more challenging than others. You're going to meet people from different walks of life. Um, your potential mate may be somebody that uh, comes from a dysfunctional family or your potential mate could be a man or a woman. You know, that which which are good men or good women who just uh, have some um, a, a temporary rough situation that they're going through at the current time while y'all are in process of dating and and getting to know one another and it can be very frustrating um you know especially when you meet somebody in their dark season um they're going through a divorce they have some baby mama drama some baby daddy drama um it can be a little frustrating you know dealing with somebody <laughs> during their darkest moment but what people have to realize is you can't fall up behind these tyler perry movies um you can't follow up behind these romance novels, you know, this love and hip hop garbage, you know, uh, that that gives uh, black relationships such a, a negative um, perception. Uh, the truth is, there's going to be things you're going to endure. There's no such thing as Prince Charming. There's no such thing as the perfect woman. It's just not going to happen. Uh, furthermore, and I've said this several times before, just because something is your type, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be, you're, you're going to be their type. Um, sometimes, you know, what's meant for us are people that we perceive to be the complete opposite of what the hell we want. Because, uh, as I stated, what you want doesn't necessarily always want you. So you got to be prepared for that. I mean, just because you're a man and you want a model type, trophy type of female, you don't want no female that's a little on the heavy side. You don't want no female with this and that type of baggage. And I get it. You're supposed to have a preference. You're supposed to have standards. But some of our preferences and standards are just unrealistic. Um, especially, Same thing with women. You know, we want a guy that's six foot seven, well-dressed, um, knows how to put it down in the bedroom, has no children, has... Um, a plus credit score. Um, he comes from a well-rounded family. That you're not going to meet a man with all those top-notch qualities. If you do, uh, you better panic because something got to be wrong. Because there's no such thing as the perfect man or the perfect woman. So if you meet somebody that's exactly everything you ever had in mind, then <laughs> you better really, really think twice. You know what I mean? Because there's just no way in the world. That's like hitting lotto, finding the perfect man or the perfect woman. I mean, you'll come close to finding what you want, but it's, uh, you know, in the words of Pastor Jakes, it's going to be that 80-20. Somebody going to have 80% of what you want, but it's going to be 20% of that part that you don't want. So you have to be in reality for that um, and just be prepared that 
um, no matter who you meet, they're going to have some challenges. It's going to be some issues. And you got to be man enough or woman enough to, to uh, be able to understand that. Now, moving further along, um, I have, I always have women who reach out to me. I got girlfriends in my family. I got females in my family, of course. I got girlfriends, you know, from high school, you know, females that I still kick it with, you know, and um, they'll call me because a lot of my friends and my family, they value my opinion when it comes to giving advice about relationships. You know, I've been married for 19 years and um, I tell people that um, it has been a journey. We've had good times. We've had really bad times. It's things that I have experienced that uh, a lot of women would have probably walked away from and threw in the towel and vice versa. Um, I've, I've had I issues as well. Um, my husband, very well like me, could have walked away, could have threw in the towel and said, I, I don't want to deal with this. This is too much. We both had that option. We both had the opportunities um, to, to separate and not be together. Um, he had other opportunities. It was other females checking for him that wanted to be with him, and I had dudes checking for me, so we, we both had options, um, but we realized at the end of the day how much we really love one another, and how much we really care for one another, and we were not going to allow um, obstacles to be a reason to not fight for our marriage, or challenges uh, c come into play to make us derail from wanting to still um, have a desire uh, for wanting to be with each other and still connect with one another. So basically, um, to be in a relationship, it takes two strong um, individual, individually minded in individuals. You both have to be strong minded individuals in order for your relationship to endure um, the trials and the tribulations, because I'm telling you, the trials and tribulations, they are coming, they are coming, I don't care how good y'all sitting right now, how good y'all eating, I don't care if the rent, mortgage paid up, your car notes paid up, the kids grown, whatever, it's going to be something that's going to take place, that's going to, uh, challenge your marriage, challenge your relationship, so, um, getting back to my point at hand, um, I had a girlfriend who reached out to me, um, she had been dating this man for three years, and um, he's been having the same issues with his ex-wife. Um, and we hear about stories, of, we hear these type of stories all the time. We hear about these situations in which, you know, these ex-wives are bitter, these ex-baby moms are bitter, and um, they want to take the man through changes once he gets involved with another woman, and things get serious, you know, uh, of course, the ex-wife, especially if she does not have a man or if she's in a bitter place in her life, um, she's not going to have his blessing. So basically, this this man um, that my friend is dating, he's stuck between the rock and a hard place. Um, he has two sons from his wife. Those are his only sons. He don't have any other children from any place else. And um, she's the ex-wife was really giving him a run for his money. And um, both kids are under the age of 13. So they're still young. They still need his guidance. They still need structure. And she's making it damn near unbearable. Um, everything is an issue. He wants to get the truth. His sons, um, she wants to use that as an opportunity to... Um, just make things difficult, you know, well, you can't get them this weekend because I got stuff I got to do, or um, why the kid boys got to go to your house, why you can't come over here and get them, you know, just on some petty betty bullshit, you know, which is what a lot of these bitter ass baby mamas and these bitter ass ex-wives, a lot of them just gonna stay bitter, I don't care what, you could be sweet, polite, respectable, it's not gonna matter, you know, just some, some people are just, they live a toxic situation so um basically she had been calling me um you know throughout the last couple of months you know not me being a friend i am you know I've, I've given her advice um i shared with her experience that i have gone through in my marriage with my husband and his ex-wife you know i told about baby mama drama i gave all the, the pointers i gave her all the advice and the suggestions and here it is you know it's going on the second year she's still calling um, about, you know, baby mama drama, and I'm like, <laughs> this is the same shit, but uh, this is a different toilet, but the same shit, you know what I mean, 
don't matter how she slices or the dice it. This week, the baby mama didn't want him to get the boys. Last week, she let him get the boys, but she started an argument. And I'm like, I'm running out of strategies and, and, and methods to give you because the truth of the matter is this. If you are going to be in a relationship, just certain things you are going to have to go through. Everybody is not going to be able to keep walking your hand and babysitting you throughout your whole relationship. We're in a generation right now, now that we have social media, we have all of these fancy gadgets that make everything readily available, that make everything easily accessible. We have this microwave mentality where things are supposed to be quick, simple, smooth selling, and we're or we're dealing with a generation where people don't want to endure nothing. People don't have no patience. People uh don't don't have don't believe in longevity. We're dealing with a, a, a microwave ass generation, you know, and, and the thing about it is um those of us who, who from the old school era, uh, those of us who have started our relationships in our early 90s, maybe millennium, you know, in our early 20s, our early 80s, the majority of us who have formed marriages and relationships back then, um, we know the challenges and, and we know how to endure the challenges. But this generation now, these men are watered down. They can't handle their business. You know, they letting ex-wives, ex-baby mamas, you know, dictate their every move because, uh, you know, they, they, they so badly, so scared that, you know, she got the power to strip his child away from him. And you just got dudes, you know, they allow these women to just suck at them and pimp them with their kids all the time to the point to where a woman can't even enjoy being with his happy ass because um, every time she turn around, he, he whining and crying about what his baby mama doing to him. She won't let me see my sons and I really love you. I want to be with you, but she mad because I'm with you. Dude, grow some balls. You have men out here that are scared to put a woman in her place, and I don't mean put in her place like beat her down or go Ike Turner on her, but um, you have men that are wimping, whimpering and whining about women that evidently have no respect for them, that, that uh, are using the system to get the upper hand on them, and these men are not men manning up, and it's frustrating the women that are in relationships with them. You know, when you see your dude acting like a soft cotton nail tissue type of dude, you know, every time this female wants to pull a fast one on him when it comes to his children, he don't want to rub her the wrong way. So he's allowing this woman to disrespect him, not only disrespect him, but the woman is allowed to disrespect the woman that he's with, you know, so damn, you know what I mean? And I get it, you know, you want a relationship with your daughters, your children, but when you just see a woman is dragging you through the mud and trying to make your life miserable, and she's making your old lady upset and mad, you, you got to do something different. You're not going to have nobody, or either, you know, you're going to cause your household and your relationship with your current lady to be in an uproar. I, I just see too many watered-down men who done don't have no more balls they let their ex-wives they let their baby mamas call all the shots and you wonder why you by yourself and you wonder why you're miserable even if you don't have a woman you wonder why you're miserable because you got to do all of this ass kissing um just to be in good graces with your wife uh, with your ex-wife because you don't want her to take away your churn from you your son your daughters from you and when it all boils down to it she gonna do it anyway, you know what I'm saying? Because she's a bit ass bitch, and if you a female, if you the type of dude, you easily to be manipulated, and you and you have that better male syndrome, she's gonna continue to keep dragging you. Are you sick of giving these cable companies your hard-earned money? Is your cable bill increasing every month? Is your cable bill close to $100 or more? Well, I can make your life much easier and your bill much cheaper with Expresso Strings. Expresso Streams is the new live TV streaming app that will provide you with over 7,000 channels for only $25 a month. All you need is high speed internet of 25 megabytes per second and an Amazon Fire Stick and I can submit to you a free 24 hour trial before you purchase today. Oh.
Discovery Networks, such as seven HBO channels, over 10 Showtime Networks, over 12 Cinemaxes, Cartoon Networks, music stations, over 100 channels from foreign countries, local news stations, and free pay-per-view events at no additional charge. We offer way more variety compared to Dish, Network, DirecTV, Comcast, Sling, Netflix, Hulu, and other live cables and streaming apps. Stop letting these cable companies rob you and start saving. If you are interested in receiving a free trial or purchasing this, be sure to email me at CafeDayPerry79 at Yahoo.com for more information. So, um, there's, that's just a few factors, um, now, uh, getting off the men, going towards the women. Some women will never, never, uh, be able to really, you know, have good relationships because, um, uh, some, a lot of women are going into relationships emotionally damaged, meaning, you know, they bring in stuff from the past with them into the current relationship. There was dudes in the past that screwed them, burnt them, betrayed them. So, um, it's a, a lot of us as women, we walk around with that venom in our system, you know, and the moment that we get disrespected or there's a challenge, um, we're ready to spit that venom out. Um, you know, a lot, it's a lot of us that are still healing, and we have not given ourselves time to really recuperate from the last relationships or um, it ain't even got to be a relation, recent relationship. Um, it can just be a guy from your past, from years ago, um, who betrayed you and hurt you really bad and you never got past it. Um, so when you when you hold on to that baggage, uh, it, it becomes toxic to your relationship with the new dude. And it's a lot of women that are still bringing old baggage. They're bringing out old emotional luggage um, into current relationships. And a man, the man is beating himself up, eating himself up because he's trying to figure out what can he do to make her happy? What can he do to try to, you know, make things better for her? But until she heals completely, it does not matter what he does. He could buy her a new car. He could buy her a new house. He could even... Uh, upgrade in his sex game in the bedroom until she has completely healed from past relationships is it is inevitable it's not going to change um with that in mind with that being said you know uh we have a lot of grown men and grown women who know nothing about um enduring and learning how to get through the good times and the bad times together um they're they're not understanding that you know relationships are not designed to be easy you know they're there i don't care how many people you call i and women we do it all the time we constantly calling each other about the same issue day in and day out you know all women can relate to this we all got that one girlfriend we all got that one relative that calls you every week with a different part with the same problem and looking for a different solution. And and the only thing I can tell, you know, these women that are going through in these relationships that want to run everybody in the ground, you need somebody to encourage you. You need somebody to uplift you. You need somebody to give you a better way of looking at your situation. Until you change your perception, because sometimes it's not always the situation. It is how you perceive the situation that can basically impact if the relationship can survive. If you are looking at everything y'all go through as a headache, man, every time I turn around, he got this going on. He got that going on. You know, uh, every time things go cool, calm, and collective, you know, his ex-wife or baby mama is, is starting stuff, you know, and he, they derail and all this and that. He's derailing and everything like that. So the problem is nobody wants to endure anything um secondly it is uh, a lot of people are not willing to do what it takes to make peace a, pri a priority in their relationship if there's an ex um if there's a baby mama there's a baby daddy that's causing your relationship um, to, to become more difficult if they're causing more stress to your marriage. Um, they're using the kids as a pawn. You're going to have to shut it down one way or another because it's going to aggravate you and it's going to aggravate your relationship. And basically, uh, it, it, it just 
comes to the point to where the relationship is just damaged. It, it can't grow. You, you, you're basically, um, you stunt your growth in a relationship. Y'all can't progress when you have all this negative energy that's holding you back. Um, you got exes from your past still trying to run your life with the kids. You got exes from your past that's, um, you know, still taunting you, still harassing you. They see you done moved on and they don't want to move on. Somebody's going to have to woman up. Somebody's going to have to man up. The problem is, you know, we have a lot of childish people when it comes to relationships. What a lot of people have to understand is relationships are for grown folks. And I mean that grown folks, and I'm not talking about your age, just because you're 18, that don't make you grown, especially if you still have the mentality of a 13 year old. And we like got a lot of grown men and grown women who know nothing about a relationship. Matter of fact, you have many, they don't even stay in a relationship long enough to endure anything. I mean, as soon as the side of trouble, the third or fourth month, you jump in ship. Because there's an obstacle, there's a challenge. Oh, it was fine and dandy as long as we out eating, we spurging, spending money, we going on vacations. You know, you don't mind dealing with the good parts. You don't mind that, you know, the good times. But as soon as there's a challenge, as soon as there's an obstacle, you jump ship. And people like that, if you are one of those people, the moment um, the trouble arises, you jump and ship and you're walking out from your relationship you're not going to, you'll never be with anybody. You're never going to be with anybody. You're going to constantly be by yourself. And my thing is, as much as we get people who want to throw shade at folks about people who have been in relationships for a long time, and there may be some haters out there who know you've been with your old man or your old lady for a long time, and they make a mockery out of the things that y'all have gone through and the fact that y'all are still together and enduring it. These are the ones who are usually relationship hoppers. They go from relationship to relationship to relationship. So why allow people that have never been stable in relationships to make you feel bad about you willing to endure um, and weather the storm with your man or your woman who loves you enough to try to fight for you to be with you? Everybody's not on that level. Some people just like just like to be around when the good times are rolling, but as soon as there's some challenges, they can't handle it. And as a grown man, as a grown woman, you shouldn't even want somebody like that on your team. You want somebody that's going to be on your team, um, whether you're doing good, whether you're doing bad, whether you got a job, whether you lose a job. Now, it's one thing if people fall short and they stay to the bottom and they're not trying to progress, they want to wallow, you know, in a misery, then it's time to most likely move on and move forward but the problem with y'all with these relationships y'all are so childish y'all are so childish you got grown men not handling their business and you got grown women not handling their business and the problem is there's too many egos in these relationships people are more concerned with being right versus being at peace with each other there's been times when I could have dragged the argument out, you know, because I was angry with my husband. I so badly wanted to give my point across. I could have dragged it on for months, you know, but I'm like, what good is that doing me? I'm to the point, I'm not trying to even win anymore. I, the old I got, I, I, I'm, my, 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 uh, my priorities are no longer not the, are not the same like they used to be. When I was younger, it was all about me being heard, and it was all about me being right. I wanted to be right. And you have some grown men and grown women, they are more concerned with being right, even if it means um, it's causing strife in a relationship. They're not man enough or woman enough to let go and say, you know what, I'm going to let you have that. Because I don't want to keep dragging this out. I don't want to keep, you know, um, adding more, you know, puncturing the same wound by staying angry with you about something, you know. Uh, so I, I've, I've learned that in many, many cases, I had to hurt and let go of my anger right away. Um, when my husband made me feel some type of way or he did something I didn't like when I was younger, I could, I could stay mad for months at a time. But I realized that it's not good to stay angry with your companion um, for a long extensive amount of time because what it does is the longer you stay angry with your man or your woman um, it basically starts to uh, the relationship slowly starts to die the relationship starts dying um, 
and it comes to a point where it's basically your relationship uh, ends up on life support. It ends up on life support, and you got to damn near decide, am I going to keep the relationship going, or am I just going to unplug the goddamn cord and kill it? Because it's killing me trying to hold on, you know, trying to keep resuscitating and giving life to this dead-ass relationship. You know, so it comes a point when a decision needs to be made. Um, but the thing is this, I don't care how many people you call for my advice. And women, we are terrible with this. We got to call nine, ten different goddamn people. You have some men who do it. You got some men that that, 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 that are soft as cottonell tissue. And they will whine to their homeboys or whatever about the same woman. But it's uh, more women that are doing it than men. Y'all call up nine different females. You call your aunt, you call your mom, you call your cousin, you call your, you call your dad. It don't matter how many people you call. When you get off that phone, you are going to have to try to find a way to make it work with your man. And the same thing, if you are a man, you calling and whining about your wife hoeing on you, she doing this, she doing that. You can cry all you want. But until that situation changes, it's going to continue to be just what it is. The bottom line is this. Everybody's not built for a relationship. Just because you're pretty and you're successful, you handsome, you financially well off, you know, whatever you think in your mind makes you relationship material, it doesn't mean that you're built for relationships. Truth of the matter is some people just want relationships because they want to avoid being lonely or they think because they got certain things going for them, they get this sense of entitlement like they should be with somebody or somebody should be willing to be with them. You got some cocky ass, um, you know, dudes out here and some arrogant females who think because they look good, they got nice bodies. Or they got good paying jobs that they are, are, are top notch prime selection as far as boyfriend relationship material, you know, and that's not true. You can have all of that going for you and underneath all of that mentally, you are just as damaged and, and um, mentally unstable. It got nothing to do with your social status, with your job titles. Got nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with your well-being, your state of mind. Are you the type of man or a type of or a type of woman that a, a person that has different cultures or different views or come from different backgrounds, where they, where at least someone can uh, have some type of common grounds with you but if you're one of these people you're walking around here and you're thinking you God's gift to women or God's gift to men you are in complete denial because you're going to keep missing out people are going to keep leaving you and you're not going to understand why you're in then in many cases some of y'all keep losing people and you still don't get it you think something wrong with everybody except you. I've seen many beautiful women get hurt. They think because she, she thinks because she's so pretty that a man should worship the ground she walks on. And because he's not willing to eat her doo-doo, she treats him like garbage and treats him like trash. Like, shoot, I, you know how many men want me? You know how many men checking for me? Yeah, but the, the problem is, yeah, dudes are checking for you. But the problem is dudes will never want to stay with you. You'll always be able to get a man, but you'll never be able to keep one. And getting and keeping is two totally different things. And it's a lot of beautiful women who drive nice cars, who got college degrees and all of these wonderful assets and nice bodies, but underneath that, they brain, they brain dead. They brain dead. No man could deal with them. They too much, you know, they narcissists, you know, uh, they, they mentally unstable, you know, it's a lot of pretty women, they too much to deal with. And they wonder why they're by themselves. And same thing, you know, let's not get it twisted. You got some handsome dudes and don't think handsome dude, handsomeness makes you exempt from being mentally ill. Um, There's some men that are very handsome. You know, they keep themselves in shape. Um, You know, they got a lot going for them. They don't have all these different baby mamas. You know, they, they pretty much made good positive choices with their lives and they've made well with their careers but no woman can't deal with him he too nasty he too arrogant he too he too much 
He's too full of himself or either he's one of them possessive ass dudes blowing up your phone, acting more like he's your damn probation officer than your man. No woman wants to deal with that. Got dudes that are like that. Dudes that are insecure because they so used to having a way all the time. And because you the kind of woman, you won't let them have their way because all oh, so many other women have before you. They looking at you like you crazy. Like you got men and women that really look good and, and, and they have the sense of entitlement. Like you should be glad that they chose you. Like who the hell are you to be walking around here acting like you all of that and, and, and a biscuit with Welch's grape jelly? When underneath all that, once people peel peel the layers off of you like an onion and they deal with the real person underneath, it, after a while, it's like, damn your looks, damn your body, damn how good you look. I've seen some nice looking dudes, but once I've gotten to know them, I was totally turned off. Nothing they said could have mattered to me. No matter how good they stroke game was in the bedroom, it didn't mean nothing to me once I peeled the layers off the onion and got to see the nasty, you know, arrogant dude underneath the layer of that. It didn't matter to me. And I'm sure in many cases, same thing with men. Once they got to deal with the real woman underneath the the, the booty and the beauty, None of that matter. And then you wonder why some of these guys get with women that are not that attractive, that are heavy set. These beautiful women, they can't understand, like, you know, why is he with her? This overweight, this trailer trash, you know, because while you're looking at it from a standpoint that, you know, he feel like he can't do no better. Maybe he has tried to be with beautiful, attractive women. But after having nothing but negative encounters over and over and over, maybe he's got to that point and said, you know what, I may have to lower my standards. Because every time I try to reach high and get with women that really got their shit together, these, these type of women, they make me feel like I'm not good enough for them. And that's the same thing being a woman. You may have some guys that may tell, I've, I've heard guys tell women, you're an attractive woman. You know, why are you picking up? this type of dude and that type of dude, you know, he's sizing a woman up based on the type of dude she picking up and his mind, because of his goddamn ego, he feeling like, you know, uh, he's looking at her sideways, you know what I'm saying? Because she may choose a simple dude who don't have the type of job he has, who don't have the type of car he has. And in his mind, he's looking at it like she's dealing with dusties when really the dude is not a dusty to her, but the simple fact that he treats her like a queen, even if he is working at Goodwill or he is driving a, a 92 Honda or whatever, you know, the point of the matter is she's been with so many nice looking dudes that always have money and have high social status. But she's been with enough of them to realize um, what you see also what you get. Sometimes women, when we mature, we find out that getting with ballers, um, a man just based on his looks or a man based on his stroke game in the bedroom, as we become older and we mature, if we have any sense and we see we're not getting nowhere with these type of dudes, one would think that she would switch up and say, you know what? Maybe I'm my, I'm making a bar too high. I'm going to have to lower my bar. Get me a simple guy that works a simple job. As long as he's nice to me, he's respectful to me. That's all that matters. So sometimes when you see the type that you've always been checking for, uh, it's not working for you. You have to switch it up. You have to do something different, you know? And I mean, that's why certain people date outside of their race. That's why certain people rather date women outside of their country or date men outside the country. Ain't had no luck here with the men and the women in, in America. They'd rather get somebody foreign. I mean, you can't knock somebody's preference just because somebody chooses to date outside of their race, date outside of their country, or they don't want a woman with kids. You, as a single mother, you may get offended like, why he got a problem with me? Because maybe he's been with single mothers and... His experience has not been a good one, but this is also another thing um, as as a man and a woman, you cannot allow negative experience to dictate who you choose to be with. Um, 
just because you met somebody down on their luck and they betrayed you and they spit on you, um, you know, now you meet a good man that's in a bad place or a good woman that's in a bad place because the last person you gave a chance in a bad place, they did you in. You you are already sizing this person up. You know, everybody's not the same. Don't go around here penalizing folks, making everybody pay the price based on poor decisions or not even so much poor decisions, but mistakes you have made. Maybe you you had good intentions, but you just gave um, chances to the wrong people who didn't deserve it. So don't go around here penalizing everybody just because you know you did you you got you ended up getting the raw end of the deal. You know. So basically, you know, I'm going to get ready to wrap things up. Uh, it's important that as a man or woman, if you choose to be in a relationship. It is a full-time job. Do not sign up for it if you are not ready to deal with the trials and the tribulations, the ups and the downs. If you're one of those type of men, you're one of those type of women, you can't endure it. Things, too much pressure. Um, under pressure, you, you fold. Um, you quit to walk out on folks. You quit to leave your uh, your woman. You quit to leave your man. Um, you have to be honest with you. You know, if you know you're not the type of person, you can't handle dealing with somebody else's issues because that is how it goes when you're in a relationship. You are dealing with somebody else's issues. But guess what? They are also dealing with your issues. And if you're just one, you can't handle it. Then save yourself the stress and save other people out there the stress. You know, stop bringing people into your life. Stop going into other people's lives if you know um, your mindset is not there. You can't endure. Um, you can't have this microwave mentality. As soon as there's a problem, I'm leaving. I'm walking away. I'm jumping into the next relationship. You will never be successful. Quitters are never successful. Anybody who's been married for a long time, they got stories they can tell you. They have situations or obstacles they can share with you that they they have had to overcome if you want to get any advice get advice from people who have been in their same relationship for a long time you can't get advice from people who have been in numerous relationships or those who have never been in a goddamn relationship that's stupid that's dumb you know what i mean that's like asking somebody to tutor you and calculus you know and <laughs> they they never even finished high school you know what i mean so you you have to be careful who you allow in your ear gate. Um, furthermore, some things you just got to goddamn go through. That this is my really my last point is that some things you got to go through it. Every relationships don't come with an instruction manual. Um, I don't care how much counseling you get, I don't care if you pay a professional therapist um to give you um advice uh or to give you uh different type of strategies on dealing with the man or the woman that's in your life, you just gonna have to find a way to endure it it's as simple as that you know it, it either ship up or ship out it's as simple as that you people cannot keep holding your hand through these relationships you can't keep calling people you know talking people to death i can't get him to do that i can't get her to do that you it don't matter until you and that person find a way to come together and work out your differences it don't matter how many people you go to on the outside it's up to both of you that are in the inside to do whatever it takes to get the relationship going. So on that note, I thought it was very imperative that I shared this content. Um, again, it's too many grown-ass men and grown-ass women. Y'all so childish. Y'all are just so childish. Y'all don't believe in enduring nothing. Y'all will throw in the towel as soon as the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You will never get anywhere having that type of mindset so you know just make sure a relationship is something you really cut out to deal with um secondly um for those of you who are um interested in traveling um you want to go somewhere for the summer you want to go take your children to disney you want to go on a cruise with your husband your wife remember i have a travel agency company you are welcome to email me at cafe day perry 79 at yahoo.com if you are interested in traveling yes you can make monthly payments this is nothing where you have to make all payments up front okay uh, furthermore those of you who are interested in cable i'm going to uh make sure i um include um information on it in this video if you are tired of paying too much money with direct tv with dish network um comcast whoever your local uh 
cable service provider is. Um, I can make I can make your life a lot easier. I can cut your cable bill in half, give you seven thousand channels a month. So uh, if you continue to watch the video all the way through, I will provide more information regarding that. So on that note, y'all, it's been awesome. It is your girl, Lady Mocha. Remember, I'm gonna always put you a cup of truth and always break you off with a slice of knowledge. Take care. Y'all have a blessed one. Bye.